This is SharePoint Power Hour Live. Um, today's topic is going to be InfoPath Form Web Parts. Um, again, everybody still uses InfoPath. A lot of people still use InfoPath. So um, even though it's going away, um, so I decided, you know, I'm not going to avoid that as a topic. I'll go ahead and do that. Even though it's going away and we kind of recommend to stop using it, at least before I get started, if you're still using InfoPath, I at least recommend that you try and avoid using form library forms. Just try that. And um, that way, because form library forms are going to be the hardest to try and um, upgrade when it gets time to upgrade. Those are going to be kind of the messiest. If you have a SharePoint list that's customized with InfoPath, then you're going to be able to just have, you have the list, you have all the data, all of, you know, even if InfoPath went away, it's still a SharePoint list and you would still have um, what's there and you could replace it with some other, whatever other form product you go with. But InfoPath form library forms, oh, those are such a mess. The, the XML is all buried in the, um, inside of that X, you know, it's, it's all buried inside of an XML file. It isn't necessarily, every column isn't necessarily a column in SharePoint. So I would stop creating those if I were you, because it's going to be horrible to try and upgrade those. All right, so um, again, InfoPath Form Web Parts. Welcome, everybody. I did all my intro stuff at the beginning, of course, when my microphone was muted. So, oh, um, the Slack channel, the description of the YouTube video has a link to the Slack channel, and the Slack channel is where we have our conversations, and it's iwmentor.slack.com. You have to get invited, though. So um, I have a form you can fill out that's in the description that once you fill out that form, I have to manually invite you. So if you fill out the form during the webcast, you'll, I'll have to invite you after when I'm done. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, the what we're going to what I'm going to demo today is what the InfoPath form, what part is, what all the settings are, and some cool ideas of how you can use it. And um, if you're in the chat window, feel free to ask questions as I go, and also um, just ideas and things that you might have done with it and give us some feedback as well. We had some great feedback from somebody the other day when I was doing the power hour about lookup, um, just lookup fields. And somebody had a really, really great suggestion that was awesome about using a calculated field. And um, I don't, that never occurred to me. That was awesome. So we put the link, um, the URL is there in the Slack channel for what um, was shared. And I've already started using that tip. So again, we're a SharePoint community. So I love it when um, everybody kind of jumps in and shares ideas with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen in here. I've, so again, I'm, I had to switch over to my Surface because my other computer's circling the drain and um, getting a new one. So I'm just, I've just got one screen today. Let me see. All right. So, okay. Sharing my screen. All right. I've got my team site, just little sort of test site that I always use for um, just stuff like this. And what I'm going to do is create a, just a basic um, list that's an InfoPath form web part that's just like a website feedback kind of form. So that's kind of a common one that uh, that people are, you know, usually like to have just on a web web page. Let me go ahead and just create a list, add an app, custom list. Let's see if I get the new list experience when I do this. <laughs> list feedback. All right, so I've got my list feedback. I'll go in and add some columns to it. So the title, I'm just going to rename that to be the subject real quick. There we go. It's a little delay there. Subject, required, yeah. And then feedback type, choice. Let's do that real quick. And I'll just do those as a, well, I'll just do it as a drop down. InfoPath doesn't exactly translate it to being a uh, radio button, does it? And one more, the comments. 
and I'll do that as a InfoPath really doesn't like multiple lines of text. So I'm just going to leave that as a single line of text. And they can write up to 255 characters. I really do try to avoid multiple lines of text when dealing with InfoPath because it's got a lot of browser compatibility issues. All right, so now I'm going to go to my home page. I've got two um, lists that I've created. Um, one's a library, one's a list. And look at that. This is the new look now, apparently. I've got Power Apps here. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to switch it over to the old uh, type of list and customizing it in InfoPath. Classic experience. All right, have you guys started seeing that in your uh, environments with the new list sort of look there with Power Apps? It's pretty cool. Do this and see if it gives me issues. All right, I'm going to get rid of that. And so there's my just quick form. I always like to add um, a submit button to it. And I, because I don't like the using the button in the at the top in the toolbar there. So what I'm going to do is quickly go make this button so that it does submit. And we can make it like a pretty little picture button. Picture buttons are really nice for making it look like a nice pretty little checkbox or something. But for now, let me go ahead and just do some real quick stuff. I'll do feedback form. So we can get this in the InfoPath form web part. All right, quick publish. Better work. <laughs> I was just using InfoPath yesterday in my on my other computer, but not this one. Okay, it published successfully. All right. But I want to show you what this web part looks like and all the cool stuff we can do with it. So, and um, so I'm going to go add a web part. Any questions so far? I see you guys um, hanging out in Slack, but who still uses InfoPath? When y'all y'all be able, you know interact and kind of give us let me know what you think because I was actually um, speaking at my user group um, meeting in Birmingham yesterday my Birmingham spug and talking about forms and when I was asking people kind of what forms product they use and we were on the table and pretty much everybody still uses InfoPath and um, so yeah that's it's going to be the case. So I'm just kind of curious if that was if that's the same with you guys. I can pick a particular content type. So here I'm in the I inserted the InfoPath form web part, and I'm picking which Lister library. So your Lister library has to you know, I have to have already configured it with InfoPath, or it has to be a form library form. And so I had already clicked to customize that list with InfoPath, and that's why it shows here. It wouldn't show here if I hadn't done that. So this is the only Lister library in the site. That I've clicked to customize with InfoPath. So once I do that, if I do have multiple content types in that list, I have the ability to pick a specific one to show here. I don't have to show just like whatever the default form is. So that's kind of nice. Um, I'm not sure why. Well, I could display a read only form. I'll show you kind of maybe an example of why we would do that later. And I'm going to leave all these other defaults here. And then I'll, we'll kind of go back and forth and change a few settings and show what it looks like. So I left the default to leave the form open when somebody submits. So I'll go ahead and save this form. Of course, I'm dealing with a wiki page now. So who knows what kind of issues we're going to have with that. Who still uses InfoPath? Um, okay, yeah. I recommend InfoWise, Info by the way. I did a um, power hour on that a couple of weeks ago. It's awesome. Um, might want to go back and watch that. All right, so here's kind of just out of the box what it looks like. It says InfoPath form web part here. Here's what it does. It's got um, my fields to fill out. And I can pick what type of feedback it is and stuff here. All right, submit. And then what's it going to do? It stays there. See, it's still just sitting there. All right, so the end user goes, okay, what? Uh, did it go or so let's go over look at see it went in so I'm going to list see feedback and see that it went but on the home page it's still like they were still just sitting there looking at the form because it didn't we didn't set it up to do anything we just said leave the form open so now we're going to go in here and tweak a few settings so I'll go edit the page again and we'll go we're going to do this a bunch because I want to show you kind of what all these different settings impact 
So one thing I like to do immediately is get rid of the Chrome type. I don't want it to say InfoPath form web part. So you can make it say something else, but it already, I already wrote feedback form in the form. So I don't really want the Chrome at all. So I'm just going to say none. Um, I did a whole power hour about all these web part settings here, by the way. So I went ahead and chose none. And then I can pick which view. I've only, it doesn't, I didn't create any views in there. And then the submit behavior. So let's say, oh, well, all right, I'll make it close the form and see what that looks like. Okay. And so there are some settings that you have to do here in the web part settings to make it act a certain way in this web part. But then there are some settings that you do in InfoPath. So we're going to be kind of switching back and forth. Um, when I'm filling this out, I, I don't know if, about you guys, but I've seen it what happened before, at least in previous versions. Maybe if you're still on 2010 or you're in 2013, as soon as you start clicking in these boxes, this popped up and changed the whole toolbar. So I'm kind of glad that they didn't make that so that it just appears front and center anymore. It just kind of leaves you where you were. But um, do another one. Another one. Complaint. So submit. So now it says the form was submitted successfully. And it actually re, uh, reloaded the page, and now it says the form has been closed. So, eh, those are that's kind of clunky. We don't want end users to have to see that, right? That's dumb. So, what we can do is there are a couple of ways we can get around that. Um, there are a couple of other little tweaks that we can do to make that a nicer experience. Um, so, we'll go ahead and go over to InfoPath, and we'll show you a couple of those. All right, I'm going to go to my list tab, and this is slow. Poor computer. All right. Who uses InfoPath? You don't see the screen share anymore? It says it's sharing. I'll click stop sharing and start again. God. Technology. Yay. All right, let me try screen sharing again. It says it's sharing now. Oh, my gosh. All right. So maybe I'll just stop switching back and forth to Slack because apparently it gets confused when I do that. I'm so, I promise I'm getting a new computer like this week. So yeah. <laughs> and I think I'm going to get a new webcam too because I think I broke my other, my other laptop is still on the blue screen. It's awesome. All right. So there's some settings in here that we can do. Um, one thing, okay. So the option that we had, um, the options we had in the web part were, leave the form open or close the form or open a new form. So the end user experience in all three of those is pretty crappy because if you leave the form open, it just leaves them on what they just submitted and they don't think it submitted yet. So they might just keep hitting submit. Um, the close the form gives the big ugly box that says um, this form has been closed and then they fill out a new form, makes it go away and a new form comes up. But, um, you know, they're not sure, you know, if their form got submitted successfully. So here's something that we can do. Um, we can go in here and do other views. So I'll do a new view called thanks. Anybody ever done this before? Um, thank you for submitting your form. Your feedback has been received blah, 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 blah. And then whatever you want, um, you know, marketing will contact you shortly or whatever. So that's a, that's a thank you view. And it doesn't. So what I can do is I can even insert like read only information about what they just received about what they just submitted to. So I can put like, um, use a calculated value to do that. So I could say calculated value of, um, whatever subject they had. So your feedback has been received subject. You can put just, um, you know, multiple fields if you want to, that's just like a summary of what they just submitted. And then, um, that would be, we can make it so that that's what the screen looks like after they submit their form. Um, and then that, then they'll feel comfortable that they can, leave the page or whatever. All right. So, but if we put a button saying close the form or anything like that, then it would get that, you know, the form has been closed thing again, and we don't want that. So um, that's what I've done there. So let's go look at some other settings. Let me go to the 
Dang it. God, it's been so long since I've been in here. Submit options. <laughs> All right. So the label, show the submit button in both the ribbon and the info tab, path tab, whatever. And then show this message if the form is submitted successfully. Look at that. And so we can show that message and we can um, make it so that it then it closes the form. Or we can leave the form open. So what we want to do is we want to show a little pop-up message saying your form was submitted successfully. That's an option that we have. And then we can leave the form open if we want to. But what we want to do is we want to kind of make use of all these fu these this functionality together to make it so that it's a nice, smooth experience for the end user. So um, this form was submitted successfully. Leave the form open. So what's going to happen is we're going to we got to make the submit button take them to that view. So let's go over to the rules and um, we want the submit button to not only submit, oops, not only submit, but we want it to also take them to that other view. I want to add another, basically add another rule to what it's doing. So um, I'm going to need to just do rules. Yeah. All right. So this is my little rules pane. So what it's going to do is I'll make it say submit again. I usually don't use the default submit functionality pretty much ever anyway. Um, so we're just going to use rules and it's going to say submit. All right. So action, it's going to submit it. And then it's going to switch views. And hopefully you guys can still hear me. It's going to go to thanks. And then I also... In my settings for my view, I don't want to show any of this on the view menu. I don't want to show any of my views on there. So I usually don't like them manually switching between views. I don't want that view drop down to box to be there. But another thing I like to do is just go into the form options and just get rid of the info path toolbar. Just get rid of it. Like to me, there's no reason, nothing useful in it whatsoever. I just create. Um, the buttons that I want to have on the form where I need them and make them each do their own thing. And who cares if they have a toolbar? So pretty much every form I publish, I don't, doesn't have a toolbar. So users don't get used to having it. So can you guys think of any reason in, uh, in here that, of course I switched over to Slack again, any reason that I would need to have a toolbar or anything that you guys, um, yeah, M. Dayton, I, I don't recommend, if you have not started using InfoPath, any of you, I don't recommend starting using InfoPath at this point. If you're not already using it, don't uh, start learning it because there's it's an old, it's an antiquated technology. Um, how do I get them when finished to submit a totally different form when they submit? That doesn't make sense. Email, email the form with a workflow. So don't ever use the email action in InfoPath either. Just uh, make it submit to SharePoint and then use a SharePoint designer workflow to, um, to send the email. Um, okay, so you said you, when using the rich text box, you need the toolbar. Yeah, I guess if you want to allow people to do that. Um, but I think when you take away the toolbar, it gives you that right sort of in line. It gives you those options in line. So I would test that if I were you, because I think that like the little toolbar, it sort of like pops up right above the box that they're editing in if you turn off the full toolbar. So, all right, um, I'm going to go ahead and publish that. So I added the little thank you pop up. You've successfully su submitted the form. I made it go to the thank you page. And then I even put information about what they just submitted on the thank you page. And then I took away the InfoPath um, built-in toolbar. So now let's go see. Um, so there's my feedback form, test three. And then submit. And what's it going to do? It should pop up something. Let's see what it does. Okay, so it went to the next screen. Your feedback has been received, and it tells me my subject. It didn't do the little pop-up. because You know why? Because I got rid of the default, default submit functionality. So that's really tricky. So now the default submit functionality is this submit options thing. So this only works 
when you're using the default submit action, submit sort of functionality on the button. So what does that mean? That means that when I go here, I have to choose submit. So if I don't choose submit here, if I'm using rules, it's not going to let me do any of the stuff that I selected here. So that's why I didn't get the pop up. So let's try this again. Let's get a nice kind of combination of those um, options and make it work just the way we want it to. So I flipped it back over to the action called submit instead of rules. But now I need to have, I, I need to go to submit actions right here. So submit actions with, um, I need to go to basically, an, oh, perform custom action. Okay. So perform custom action using rules in here. Plus, I get all of this stuff. You see what I'm saying? All right. Now, see this rule over here? That is what's going to happen when I um, submit it. So I'll go. I just have to add my switch views thing. All right. So now it's going to do, and I'm just going to call this submit. Just um, I like to do that. All right. Now we should get a nice um, combination of having the pop-up and taking them over to the thank you screen. We finagled it. All right, let's see. Maybe I should use the pop-up in here so it'll show me when you guys um, have a question. That way, I'll, there we go. Okay, so now let's go back to the home page. We're going to refresh it. And that way, if there's a pop-up that says that you can't see my screen anymore, I'll see that too. Um, all right, so now I've got another... suggestion and submit look at that that is so pretty people love these right <laughs> so the form is submitted successfully successfully okay and then it switches over to da -da -da -da, the thank you screen come on thank you screen <laughs> oh no so it says the form has been closed so it didn't switch over to thank you screen all right so this is kind of why i decided to do an entire power hour about this just because of all the weird little combinations of things in here so you have to have the right settings in in infopath and combined with the right settings in the web part so let's see if i can um go look at the web part settings here I have had to do this before where you just you just end up going back and forth between the web part settings and info path. And sometimes what you change in info path changes the web part settings. Okay, so notice um, when I got I got rid of um, I turned off the toolbar from within info path, but I could also have done that just from within the web part. So in this case, since I turned it off, anybody that's filling out that form from anywhere is not going to have the ribbon as opposed to just people using the web part. All right, and then I've got submit behavior, close the form. No. Oh, so it's locked down because that's what I um, set it up to do in InfoPath. All right, that's fine, whatever. All right, let's go to InfoPath and fix that. Okay, so we got a couple of different screens here. We've got our submit actions screen, which is going to perform custom action using rules. So it did um, do this. And I chose after submit, leave the form open. And then it, we go to my um, rules pane for my form submit over here. Let's see. All right, let's go to um, move that up. See if that makes a difference. I've had I've had to do it before where I had to do some settings over here and some settings in the web part, and the right combination of settings didn't. Um, you know, you had to get the right combination of them for it to work correctly. So let's see. Somebody had a um, comment. Let's see, um, Maroon, um, you don't join the Google Hangout. It's just streaming live on YouTube from Google. This is uh this is where we do our chat just in um in here. I mean it's streaming on the Google Hangout, but it's the exact same thing that it's streaming on YouTube. Sound is cutting in and out. Oh, awesome. Good to know. I'm getting a new computer, so <laughs> okay, thanks. I don't know. Um all right. 
Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I, you know, want to show you some other sort of functionality in here. But, um, yeah. Okay, so let's go over to Submit Options. And I'm going to say send form data to a single destination. And then, hold on. So basically, what the compromise that you're going to have to make here is that what we've what we found is that, and I've gone through this in the real world too. It's kind of nice that you'd be able to have the pop up and and taken taken take to the thank you screen, but it's really going to be one or the other. So if you do the pop up, then you have to do the send form, and you can't have any other actions on your button. You just have to use that submit from the drop down in the properties. But if you want to switch views to the thank you view, you have to do leave the form open and you have to um, just take, you, take, take them to the thank you screen without um, doing the custom submit stuff. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, not use this submit. I'm going to use um, rules and I'm going to just make this say submit. And that way we kind of get the best of both worlds. We're going to submit the form. It's going to go into SharePoint and it's going to, and we're also going to give them the thank you, give them that information, that extra information. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and so we could make it open a new one. We could make them submit it, have the pop up and open a new one. Or we can make them have it submit it and do this other rule to take into the thank you page. I always like to have extra rules when people submit things, like it changes a status or something anyway. So that's why we're using the thank you page. So I'm going to go, so I published it again. I'll go refresh the page. All right. And. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so let me double check and make sure I refresh it. It looks like that there were, so if you're dealing with um, this in InfoPath 2010, there was a lot of clunkiness with like changing some settings in InfoPath and changing some in the browser and then them conflicting with each other. But at least now it looks like they've grayed out some of the settings in the web part when you actually do the stuff in InfoPath. In, in InfoPath. All right, I'm going to do a complaint, submit. And it should go to the thank you page. I don't like the way it refreshes the entire page just to take you, take me to the thank you page. That's kind of annoying, but all right. So now we're going to talk about other ways that, you know, being able to pass parameters to a form. So what I'm going to do is let's do a real quick um, web part page. So I'll go to site contents and go to my site pages. Oh, they used to be grouped by, oh my gosh, whatever. Okay. Site pages. And then new web part page. You can tell I have a lot of test web part pages in here. Um, and that's going to be my form with parameter. Oops, I created it in site assets whatever. All right. So I created that inside asset. So now what I want to do is I want to put a web part on a page that is going to get a parameter passed to it. So I have to use, I'm going to use the query string and let, let's see, cause you know, the ones in the form web, the, the form library form, it says parameter on the screen when you're publishing the web part. So they, and they say that, you know, the parameter doesn't exist when you're doing a list one. Well, it doesn't have it on the publish screen, but I've seen it still work. So I'm going to call this um, type and I'm going to pass whether it's a suggestion or a, um, so feedback or suggestion, I think were the two different types that I had. So I'm going to pass that information, um, in a parameter. So you guys can think about other information you might want to pass in parameters like um, something having to do with what project it has to do with or for a task having to do with like what thing that the task is, is associated with. So those are good purposes for 
creating parameters. I think I did a whole power hour about query string parameters. All right, so I'm going to call it type and I'll click OK. And then I'm going to add the web part, add the form to it. I'll just put it over here. InfoPath form and go. All right, so now my, um, I have to pat, connect my query string web part to my InfoPath form web part. And, oh yeah, see, okay, so this is what's gonna happen when you don't have a parameter, um, but I, you can still pass things from a, uh, from a list form. So we'll test that out a little bit. So what I have to do is, so the little parameters thing that I was talking about in the form library form, I can't pass parameters to the list form, but I can pass parameters to a form library form. But I have seen the list form give me the ability to pass information out of it, just not into it. Okay, so that's what it was. Um, is there another tool that gives you the ability to edit default forms in a GUI? Yes, I did an entire series of power hours. It's a playlist. So now there's still a lot of cool things we can do in InfoPath with just using, um, just using what we have, just using the list forms. All right, so I'm going to show you how you can make it so that it passes information to uh, another web part on the page. Um, and also how you can make it so that it will show, let's see, show the current form is another one that exists. Okay, so let's go, I'm going to edit this page. And what I want to do is I'm going to add the whole list of things in here. And I'm pretty sure this was um, this is an option that um, still will work with a list list feedback yeah there we go there's that one <laughs> and there's the whole yeah and that's the whole um, playlist okay so I added the list feedback so let's see if we can make it so that when I click one it shows that form so this wouldn't be for the people that are filling out the forms this would be for the people reading the forms so kind of switch gears in your head to people that need to be able to consume the forms and do something with them and like maybe read them and see information about them let's see if this will work um, I want to edit web part and dun, dun, dun. get form from let's get form from form location and content type can I be modified because it, yeah that's fine all right save okay so now what it's going to do is it's going to be blank it's, or it's just going to have the first one selected Look at that. So when I go, look at that. When I go click through the different ones, it's, you can see test again. It's showing me that form. Kind of nice, huh? And have y'all seen this where I make it show the picture of the person that's filling out the form? Let's go do that real quick. Let's see how quick that is. I've only got 10 minutes left, but all right. I'm trying to decide if that, you know, I've already done a power hour that has you doing stuff with the people fields and doing stuff with um, the user profile and showing the picture of the logged in user by default and doing, you know, the user information list and user profile and all that. So I think actually I'm going to avoid doing that. So what I'm going to do is show you how that you can have a complete, like sort of like a dashboard of things going on just in some list on your site and have that in an info path form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, just a completely blank list that's not has nothing in it. And I'm what I'm going to do is the whole purpose of the list. There's nothing like I just created this list, but there's no um, there's nothing in it. I'm not using it for anything. So I'm going to I'm just make saving a little bit of time by not creating a new list. And I'm just going to this one that I already have. And I'm going to customize it with InfoPath. So the whole purpose of this list is not going to be to collect data or have any data in it. The whole purpose is just going to be to be sh to show some information in a web part um, just from other lists on the site and stuff like that. So let's do um, data connections. It's going to receive data. 
yeah um, SharePoint list from my travel site and I'm gonna do my uh, travel requests and so I have to pick which columns I want to show destination um, requester whatever status okay so I'm just gonna do a few columns I'm gonna sort it by the last put the most recently modified ones on top and automatically retrieve data when form is open yes I want all of those I don't have to now this could be something to where I could make it so that I just want to see a specific subset of data and I would uncheck this box and I did a whole other power hour about how to query specific SharePoint list information so I'm not going to get into that right now either all right so I've got travel requests and then what I want to do is take away this little ugly thing right here go over to advanced view and go to my travel requests and drag that list in there as a repeating table and that's very ugly so if you're ever trying to look at information that's in a people field just um, in a repeating table like this I'm just going to take uh, this person's name and stick it in there as a calculated value there we go so it still puts it in there it what looks like a repeating table but it's just going to display their name so I'll just do display size um, yeah I'll just do like that there we go okay destination requester status ID and then uh, for status I can make it have like a certain icon or something like that so I'll get rid of ID here and I can do like a sort of like a KPI here so what I'm going to do is I have to upload some sort of KPI type of images. So I'll go to resource files here and click add and let's go find just who knows what I'm going to find here. Um, go find some like tiles or something like that. So I think I've got some tiles, pictures, tiles, metro tiles, no picture. There we go. All right. So I want them to, I don't want them to be too gigantic or anything like that. So I want to put like just some, the idea is just to be able to show a certain icon according to a different, a certain status. So I'm just going to take this yellow one and upload it. And then let's see if I've got like a, yeah, there's a red one. That's good enough. Okay. So now I've got two different icons and I have to insert it as, so if I insert it as a picture, it won't let me create a rule on it. So I'm going to insert it as a picture button that just doesn't do anything. So I'll go um, pick what picture I want. So I'll say yellow. And then also insert the red one as a picture button. So again, I'm not making it, I'm not putting a rule on it so it does anything necessarily. I'm just inserting them so you can see the pictures. And then I'll let's see what are my different statuses going to be. I have to go see what they are before I can... Um, uh, da, da, da. I'll just do, I have to go see what the statuses are for my travel requests. By the way, travel requests is what I'm going to be doing for my, um, my workflows and forms class that I'm teaching in a couple of weeks. We build out an entire business solution. It's a four day class. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So status, I've got one that's new and one that's VP approval step. So since I already have some in here, I'm just going to use those statuses just to make this quick since I've got six minutes. But again, think about like pending versus denied, you know, rejected or something like that. So I'll say new and I'll say VP approval step. And this is case sensitive. So I'm going to do um, rules, additional formatting, um, hide this control if status is not equal to new okay and then take this one and formatting hide this control if status is not equal to VP approval step all right and is this magical or what so now I'm going to so that's going to be just a real quick little table that it'll show there. And I'll go ahead and just quick publish that. Finish. Okay, so now i got to go back to my browser and go to my home page 
here. Okay, so now I'm going to add another bit of fun here. Insert web part. And when I'm teaching a class, like it's more thought through, so I have actual scenarios that make sense. This one I'm kind of just throwing stuff together that um, doesn't necessarily go together. Um, just throwing it all on a page just to be able to quickly demo something for you. But my class has got like a full business solution that goes, you know, that we go through and um, build it all in order and everything. All right. That is read only. That would be a read only form. I don't need to have nobody's submitting anything. Nobody's filling anything out. The whole purpose of this form is just to show my list. Oh, and it's, is it not going to show the icons? It's not showing my icons. Are you kidding me? Uh, what? Dun, dun, dun. Let me see if I can troubleshoot that. That doesn't make any sense. Let me make them bigger. See, let me show you the other option for inserting pictures in here. It could be a browser thing too. So if I go pictures and I insert like, um, who knows what that is, so swim team stuff. What I was just going to show you is that it doesn't let you do rules if you insert just a picture. Okay, so that's why I did picture buttons. But I'm wondering if it's a browser thing. Oh, hide picture button and read only views. Ha ha, look at that. Just uncheck the box. Gotta love it. Because, you know, why would you want somebody clicking a button when it's a read-only view, right? That makes total sense to have that as an option. <laughs> okay, so let's go back over and refresh the home page. And magic. Let's see. Look at that. So it looks like I have some other um, different statuses that I didn't account for here. So I would need to, like, figure out what I want to show there for all those and do the logic. But that's pretty neat, right? You like that? Yeah, so that's all figured out. Um, that was, <laughs> let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen in here. And, and go back to my, there's a little webcam. Okay, so what we learned here is that, again, don't start using InfoPath <laughs> if you're not using it yet. Start using with something else um, because it's going away and it's an antiquated technology and you're going to have browser compatibility issues and it's not really a mobile thing, et cetera. But um, InfoPath form web part is, ni is nice for having nice, pretty little web part on a, like, on a page for feedback and things like that. Um, some other things that we didn't really get a chance to do was um, just, I didn't really have time either, was the ability to... Um, the whole parameters thing. So if you want to send do send a parameter, if there's an action that exists that's like send information to web part, and you can do another type of web part connection that lets you um, send just some value from some field or something like that and do a web part connection and send it to another web part if you want to like filter that other web part or something. So um, you could use it that way. You could also pass parameters. So what if, so picture this. <laughs> I've got a nice pretty home page with three tiles on it that's um, submit a type of feedback. And one of the tiles says suggestion and one says complaint and one says, you know, whatever. And when you click the tile, it's actually, all the tiles are sending you to the same web part page, but they're all passing a different parameter to the form. Like the feedback type would be the parameter, and that would pre-populate that little, you know, feedback type drop-down box with, with that value, and that way they would continue filling out the form. So think about um, more complex projects also where you might need to have dashboards full of information and being able to have um, multiple web parts and lists and be able to quickly fill out the form on the page and have it, you know, let the end user stay on the page um, to be able to, and it would, you know, populate information in those other lists on the page just sort of on the fly without having to navigate all around. So that's going to be, those are going to be some major uses. And of course, I showed you that you can just put in a form web part on the page, just showing like a quick dashboard of information with some statuses. And um, so that's another little way that you can use that um, since there's no real just quick out of the box. Well, it's, when you get to, to BI, you still have um, 
still have sort of the indicators that you can do in a way and you have that which is also old in a way but then if you're really going to go for it with a bi i recommend power bi so all right well um thanks guys i know i spent you know the the whole morning struggling with my um uh, hardware issues in my blue screen but um you know the show must go on so <laughs> Um, that, that, that left me zero time for actually creating any demo content. <laughs> so thanks everybody for coming. Um, you can, hopefully you've signed up for my newsletter. Um, also I'd appreciate if y'all would all subscribe to my YouTube, YouTube channel as well, cause I'm trying to get up to 5,000 followers because once I get to that point, it will let me do a lot more things. It'll, I'll, it'll get light up a lot more options in there. So um, I would appreciate if y'all aren't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, if you would do that. And I will see you guys next week. Thanks for coming. Bye.